Hey friends, welcome back to another quick coach session of the DP600 Fabric Analytics Engineer Certification Prep. Hopefully you're excited to dive back into the content. And if you didn't see our first video in this series, walking you through the context of DP600 with Brian Knight, we went through and we did a little bit of the exploration of Cert XP and focusing specifically on how to go through and plan out a data analytics environment. We're skipping forward in the navigation of Cert XP here to a context around prepare and serving the data on um, the context of also how to go through and create Create objects in lake houses or warehouses. Now, today I have the lovely Allison Gonzalez with me today from the Power BI team here at Pragmatic Works. Allison, tell me a little bit about your background with Microsoft Fabric. <laughs> so, been in Power BI for a bunch of years. Um, for Fabric, I know one sentence that I had you write for me every time that I talk about Fabric but I have to take this exam in a month, so I'm very excited to start my prep, see where we're at. You could give me all the pointers. Absolutely, that's what I'm here to do. What about lake house? You've uh, been in a lake house before? I've been in an actual lake house, vacation. We're talking like a nice A-frame, like Florida lake or like Northern lake. So I'm not with that. Not a fabric right. lake house though. No, Okay. no idea. Well, this is gonna be great because we're gonna be able to kind of talk through some of the concepts of what is a lake house, what is a warehouse, maybe the difference between them and why you wanna use either or in the context of Microsoft Fabric, and then also answer some of these questions that kind of appear or similar ones on the exam so that you can be ready to pass that yourself and be your own fabricator in the fabric analytics realm. So let's go ahead and jump right into it on preparing and serving the data. Before we begin, do you wanna learn more about Microsoft Fabric and Azure? Visit prag.works forward slash Austin 40 and you will save 40% on an annual on-demand learning subscription where you will gain access to over 100 courses. Now, on to the video. Question number one, you need to integrate tables that were created in Dataverse into your Fabric Lake House on one link. When you go to create the shortcut through the Fabric Lake House user interface, you're unable to see any of the Dataverse tables to use as a valid option. What do you need to do first? And the options available to you are to go through in the Fabric Admin Portal and ensure that Microsoft 365 Dynamics environment is in the same tenant and region as your Fabric tenant. Use the link to Microsoft Fabric feature from the Power Apps Maker Portal. Develop a data pipeline to move the data into one link or enable Dataverse integration through the Fabric Admin Portal. A couple of these might be true, but what's the first thing you need to do? Oh my gosh. Okay, so looking at these, I have no idea i have some thoughts though so having done a little bit of power apps hearing dataverse with that first one seeing like tenant and region and kind of stuff makes me i kind of look at that uh and then it's also the longest one so test taking sometimes i'm just like i'll go with the okay. longest one if i don't know i don't know so let's let's go with that one we'll go with my gut here okay let's see what this one could be uh, this no. one's all right. So the answer for this one is to use the link to Microsoft Fabric feature from the Power Apps Maker portal. So in order to go through and actually be able to connect inside of Microsoft Fabric using a Fabric shortcut, you're going to want to enable that feature from the Dataverse environment first. In order to kind of have that connection between there, you have to use the link from Microsoft Fabric and to Microsoft Fabric environment there. So that's okay. We got some redemption coming at the end so remember that answer because that's going to totally. come back around at the end of the uh, test part here so let's go ahead and continue to the next one you are using a data flow gen 2 data flow gen 2 is just like power query editor so you have some oh. background there uh, so you're using this data flow gen 2 to create a new dimension table in a fabric lake house your table is going to immediately need a relationship that links to the central fact table for your semantic model when setting up your data destination you need to determine the best type of schema option. What should you select, dynamic schema or fixed schema? Ooh, okay. So, we're reading through this. Let me see if there's any little words that stick out to me. So, if I'm using Dataflow Gen 2, essentially Power Query, right? To create a new dimension table. So, I want to go with dynamic. Okay, let's see what dynamic schema see? brings us. 
That's Ugh. another no. incorrect one. So <laughs> really the big decision here is if your schema is going to be changing and you know that it's gonna be changing, you have this lake house that you're trying to build as a proof of concept, or you may be trying to just decide what are your ultimate fields and attributes that you're going to have as a part of your dimensional model, dynamic schema would be the option. But because of the necessity that relationships are going to be created and managed as a part of this semantic model, if that fit dynamic schema has new columns added to it, it's going to break every single time a new data flow gen two runs. So fixed schema is going to enforce that the relationship is not going to break or not going to fall apart during any of the uh, future loads of that. So fixed schema for when you really need those relationships on your semantic model. That is good to know. Yeah, all right, let's look at the next one. You need to recommend a data store solution that will locate it in a Fabric workspace and supports read access by T-SQL or Python and can store unstructured or semi-structured data. So what solution should you recommend? A data lake, a lake house, a data warehouse, or a data mart? These are all fantastic options. Hmm. I'll give you a hint. Around okay. the unstructured, semi-structured data types, what type of data? I feel like a lake would be more fluid than a warehouse, which would be much more stored. So let's go with a data lake? All right, it's close Question to mark? it. It's close to a data <laughs> it's lake. A lake house. It's oh, a lake it's so house this time. So we're wanting to have different types of data. Okay. And data can be stored in those different formats <laughs> on a data lake. You can have semi-structured, unstructured. Semi-structured would be like a CSV file, has like a, a structured look to it, but technically isn't stored in like a structured table, like a database would be. And unstructured would be like images, media, things that just have no structure whatsoever to them. So with a lake, Lake House, you have this ability to store all of these things here. You could store in the files, the semi-structured, you can kind of put inside of the structured aspect of the Lake House in these delta tables, the data that can be structured. So that's kind of where we're going to have that decision of which one we can use. Uh, things like a KQL database, Data Mart, uh, Data Warehouse, they're really only going to support structured data formats. So let's go to the next one. You're building the Fabric Warehouse and want to use T-SQL commands to clean up the data. Which of the following objects would best support this cleaning up of the data? A stored procedure, a view, or a table value function? Okay, so thinking through SQL, let's go with stored procedure for this one. Okay, stored procedure, let's see what we got. That is correct. A stored procedure is a great tool to be able to have a pre-written SQL statement that executes and can be called upon for this transformation that happens through SQL over and over and over again. A view is more of a combination of different tables or aggregated data that can be summarized very quickly and executed for an end user. A table value function is often used in Fabric alongside of a security policy to enable row level security to restrict access to rows for individual users. So great job on that one, Allison. Stored procedure is absolutely correct. What would be the best way to ingest data into a bronze layer of the Lake House Medallion architecture to minimize the implementation and maintenance efforts? Now, are you familiar with the Lake House Medallions? Not at all. I know we've got gold. Do we also have silver? Yeah, There's also very it's like the Olympic medals, right? So, <laughs> so the Lake Houses are getting the medals. Yeah, so nice. the gold is like, the best, right? That's okay. the curated, the highly aggregated layer. The silver is the transform layer. The bronze is like a uh, a replica, the raw state okay. of the layer. So you're trying just to really get like the, the base format of this. So our options here okay. are notebook, copy data activity, data flow gen 2, mm. or a stored procedure. These are all words I've heard you say before. <laughs> so let's see. Okay. We're gonna go on a limb here and let's say copy data activity. Yeah, so the copy data activity is going to be the best answer for this one. Now, technically, all of these probably could work. Store procedure, maybe a little less. Data flow gen two would be a valid solution is like an exact replica. You can do that a notebook as well. The reason to go with a copy data activity here is because you're just going to be loading this bronze layer, the raw layer from your source to the lake house, you would be able to go through and 
use a copy data to just uh, take from the source and write to the destination with no transformations in between. Typically in a Dataflow Gen 2 or a notebook, you're going to be doing some sort of transformation with that. Now, there could be use cases for a very large sample of data, potentially millions of records that a notebook might perform better. But in this kind of situation, a copy data activity would be the best option. All right, let's go to the next one. This is a long one. You have a fabric tenant. Your company has one terabyte of legacy accounting data stored in Azure Data Lake Storage Gen 2. The data is queried only once a year, so not very often, for a few ad hoc queries that submit very selective queries. You plan to create a fabric lake house or warehouse, might depend on what you're looking at, to store the company's sales data. Now, a developer, the person creating this, must be able to build reports from the lake house or warehouse based on the sales data. The developer Developers must also be able to do ad hoc analysis of the legacy data at the end of each year. You need to recommend which Fabric architecture to create and the process for integrating the accounting data into Fabric. The solution must minimize administrative effort and costs. So what should you recommend? This is where we have some like options. We really got to think through this one. Do we want to, number one, ingest the sales data into the Fabric warehouse and use a pipeline to move the legacy accounting data? Number to set up a lake house with a shortcut to the legacy accounting data, ingest the sales data into the Fabric Warehouse, and add the SQL Analytics endpoint of the lake house to the warehouse for cross-querying, ingest the sales data into the Fabric Lake House, and set up a shortcut to the legacy accounting data in the storage account, or ingest the sales data into the Fabric Lake House and use a pipeline to move the legacy accounting data into the lake house. Any thoughts on this one, Allison? This is why I'm so glad we have Cert XP and I can review these <laughs> questions a billion times before I take this exam. Okay, let's look through this and I'll guess an answer. Probably it'll be wrong and you can explain it to me. Okay, so we have multiple steps that we have to accomplish here, right? So we need to make the lake house or the warehouse to store the data Developers need to build reports on that based on the data. They also need to be able to do analysis whenever at the end of the year. Okay. And then the whole other thing is you have like some of this historical data that's not queried often and then some data that's going to be queried a lot more yes. frequently. So that's kind of the, the major piece to this as well of how you would store this. So looking at these, I was like, all of these words sound good. We could go with my s default test structure of whatever I don't know an answer, I go with the longest one. So let's do that because there's, and I'm gonna have you explain when I'm right or wrong All what right. this is. Let's see what we got. No, so for this one, we want that to, <laughs> <laughs> for this one, we want to ingest the sales data into the Fabric Lake House and set up a shortcut to the legacy accounting data in the storage account. So the sales data, because it needs to be queried more frequently, we want to store that in our Lake House. That's going to be our analytical semantic layer for where we can go through, grab that data, put it inside of like a Power BI report, pulling that data from the semantic model, and then have an ability to go and set up queries for it as well very often. The other side of this is we have a shortcut. This shortcut allows us to go through and make a connection to a pre-existing storage account. Maybe it's an Azure Data Lake, maybe it's an Amazon S3 bucket, maybe it's a Google Cloud Provider storage account, but allows us to go through and set up to this external account that's not really a part of our uh, one lake exactly, but it's been integrated into that using this connection. So you have this ability to then go through, create that connection to the old their data and query it as necessary whenever those uh, questions are called upon uh, by our higher level executives who need this report. So uh, going through and setting up that shortcut to the legacy would be the best option. That actually makes a lot of sense and is super simple. Yeah. All right, a couple more here we got. A data analyst is working within a lake house environment in Microsoft Fabric and needs to query the data stored in an Amazon S3 storage bucket. So we just kind of talked about this. To streamline access to this data, they decide to create a shortcut. Where within the lake house environment should the data analyst create the shortcut to access this data? So we have two different parts of the lake house that really matter is there's the file section and the table section. So the options are in the file section of the lake house, within the table section of the lake house, in the object storage section of the lake house, or within the blob section of the lake. So house. it's a blob like out on the lake and we can jump on it and get into it. Is that nah, the blob it's not that here? blob. Those are fun for no. summertime though. All right, okay, so um, let's go with the file section for this one. 
All right, in the file section of Lake House, awesome, absolutely. So you have your tables and you have your files. Tables are gonna have that more structured look and feel. This connection to the Amazon S3 bucket is just going through and bragging to bring some raw data in. So we have that ability to make that shortcut over to the Amazon S3 bucket in the file section. We could also do it to the tables, but that would specifically be for a use case where we already have a Delta table inside of that Amazon S3 bucket and we want to just map over one individual table at a time using that shortcut option. All right, question. You are tasked with building a fabric analytical data store to build out a relational schema for SQL queries. Your solution needs to store data on the one lake and be able to support create table statements. Which of the following options meets these requirements? And this is where we get into, well, should I use a lake house? Should I use a warehouse? Should I use a KQL database? What's the best option? So the options are a SQL endpoint, a warehouse, a lake house, or a KQL database. Allison, what do you think? I kind of want to stick with a lake house because we've been in lake houses this whole time. Okay, let's see I what the lake like house brings us. That. Yeah, uh, this one's going to be incorrect. So the major the issue, <laughs> the major issue with this one, is that create table statements are not supported inside of a lake house. A lake house for SQL queries is going to be a read-only operation with a few minor things you can create, but specifically creating tables or running any sort of DDL, data definition language, or DML, data manipulation language statement is not supported in the lake house. The warehouse is your analytical layer for being able to run those type of queries and to create those type of objects for yourself. All right, two, two more and then we're gonna do our review. A data architect is tasked with recommending a solution for creating a data store that supports data flows while ensuring Delta tables are V order optimized. V order optimized stands for VertiPack optimization. It's the engine that allows Power BI to read from these lake house tables very optimally. So this is going to be automatically optimized. After this careful consideration, again, which of these options would you want to select? So we've got data lake, data mart, a lake house, or a data warehouse. Let's go with lake house. All We're right. Gonna stick with it. Yeah. Lake house again, and lake house <laughs> is correct. The main thing here about this V order optimization is a warehouse is not going to be able to support that type of automatic ordering and optimization. So using a lake house is going to be your best option for getting that uh, optimal read and taking advantage of direct lake capabilities inside of Power BI. Last one, you are using a Dataflow Gen 2 to transform and append 1,000 records daily. You need to decide whether you should enable staging or disable staging for the daily load. Which option should you select? Now I'll tell you, this is a little bit different from like the Power BI enable load, disable load that allows you to pick and choose which mm -hmm. tables, queries turn into tables inside of your report view. This is going to be for having this staging layer where it's optimally used for working with big data or potentially some sort of transformation that supports a, um, a staging of that data intermediately when you're loading a lake house through a Dataflow Gen 2. Thinking of that, how many records you're bringing in, that what you just explained, I'm gonna go with disable. All right, disable staging is correct. So dis uh, when you go through and disable staging, you're essentially going to not load that data to the staging lake house or the staging warehouse, depending on where your analytical store in uh, location is going to be. Uh, there are use cases for when you do want to enable staging that are going to come around specific transformations that you're doing or the size of the data that you're working with. But for this small amount of data, there's really no benefit to doing that in this instance. So we want to disable staging to get the best performance the best load and the quickest refresh times possible for us. All right, so we have some redemption yes. questions here. So let's kind of go back and quickly look at some of these again. So you need to integrate tables that were created in Dataverse into your Microsoft Fabric Lakehouse. This is the question about how we go through and link those tables from Dataverse into Fabric. Do you remember what this one might be for you? So a very key word in there. We're going to go with use the link to Microsoft Fabric feature from the Power Apps Maker. Portal. Absolutely. That link is a very important keyword. We're linking this together from Dataverse into the Fabric environment. So great job there. Redemption one successful. 
So we're using this data flow to create this new dimension. This was the question that was about, you know, the relationship, the breaking of the relationship. What should we select here for when we need to have a relationship that stays on our semantic model layer? We want to go with fixed. We don't want that break in. Yeah, absolutely. So fixed schema is the correct answer here. Fixed schema, dynamic schema is going to cause that to break whenever we run that again. So we need to recommend a data store solution that will be located in Fabric that supports access with T-SQL or Python and can also store unstructured or semi-structured. This is where we have like different types of formats of data. Remember what the option might be here? We're going to go with Lake House. I went with Data Lake last time, but we need a little bit more structure, so we're going with the Lake House. Absolutely, Lake House. Another thing I mentioned here that I failed to mention before is when you want to query this with Python, like through Spark, a data warehouse would obviously not be a solution either because a warehouse does not currently support Spark operations. So another reason why this just it has to be a Lake House for this answer. All right, this was one of those long ones again. This was that whole like, hey, you're going through, you have the legacy accounting, and then you also have this new sales data that you're trying to bring in. So which one are you going to choose for this one? All right, we're going to go with option three, which is actually super simple compared to how long the question is. Yeah, exactly. We're ingesting the data into the fabric lake house, and then we're setting up a shortcut to that legacy accounting data. Great job. Absolutely crushing these redemption questions. Uh, one more at least, uh, we have uh, this task to build a fabric analytical data store, but we need to run some of those DDL and DML operations with a create table statement. So what would be the best option for us here? This is a warehouse. This is a warehouse. Great job, Allison. You did awesome. That was an excellent, great job. You're learning fabric. You're going to be ready to take this test, I think, maybe in just a couple weeks even. Yes. I thought you were going to say tomorrow, and I was like, absolutely not. But <laughs> with this, I'm going to go through, take the whole thing, and I think I will crush it. Awesome. When it's ready. And if not, I'll just come ask you questions. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us here again today for another session of Quick Coach with Austin and Allison. If if you like this video, go ahead and give us a thumbs up. Put a comment in what you want us to talk about next. What are you most interested in us kind of delivering around this content moving forward? Thank you so much. I'll see you in the next one.